Welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on this April 19th, 2020, second Sunday in Easter service. I am Pastor Mark Beatty, and on behalf of our new associate pastor, Bonnie Laney, Vince, Juan He, and our entire team, welcome to worship this day. For today, I wanted to talk a little bit about liturgy as well. Uh, usually while we're here in worship gathered physically together, we think about liturgy as being the work of the people in our standing, in our sitting, in our speaking responsibly, in our praying, in our singing, and all these things that we do. We are the gathered body of Christ and are part of worship together. It's limited what we can do here and now this way, but we're trying to engage as much as possible in this live worship and also if you're watching afterwards so you can be a part of this worship and be a part of liturgy. So some parts, actually, as I've thought through this, are a little bit almost upside down from what we usually would have thought of before this time of being sheltering in place. So for instance, while we're gathered here physically, we think no cell phones, have them on mute, turned off, in pockets, don't touch them. But here, it's exactly the opposite. Bring them out, have them, look at them on screen, and actually the very things that might have been distracting in person are the very things that are connecting to us now. So during the worship, be, feel free, whether you're a computer or whether you're on your phone, to respond with likes, with anything else that you want to do, with comments. If you believe this worship might be meaningful for someone else who could use that good news now, feel free to share our worship. Just be sure to stay connected in the midst of that because we don't have ushers and greeters now too. So if you're a, uh, if you're a, a new visitor, we would love to hear. I love hearing the different people from different states, wherever you happen to be. And if you're a member of Holy Trinity and see that, go ahead and type in during the worship. Thank you so much for being with us. Welcome. We are glad you're here. So go ahead and be involved in that. And let us consider that to be part of the liturgy, part of the work of the people that we share here together in worship. And may all that be to glorify God, to connect us closer to each other and to our risen Lord. Let's see a couple other things. All the worship will be able to be followed just simply by following us and then on screen. For all the on-screen parts, when you see them in bold, that's for the congregation, for you, for everyone gathered here in worship, for all of us to be able to speak or to sing together. So do look for those parts. And again, that's part of our liturgy, part of our work of the people. So do be a part of those as we worship together. Our theme for today is a living hope, and we find that from our first Peter 1 reading that we have as one of our readings today as well. We continue now with our opening music.
As we celebrate this new day, please join me in our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please join me in our confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, source of our living hope, may we who have not seen draw near to you and receive the gift of faith, believing and responding with joy to Christ, the source of our salvation, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
read Psalm 16 responsibly. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forever. We continue with the reading of God's Holy Word. A reading from the book of Acts, second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of the, those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let the Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently, of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that of all us are witnesses. The word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the first chapter, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said again to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called a twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. to invite any of our children who may be gathered here either live with us or of course later if you're watching this come and head up to the front of the screen and we'll have some brief children's time and for today I want to teach you a few signs these are some religious signs the first one is for Jesus and you may have seen this before and it goes like this can you do that with your hands just back and forth it's to your middle finger right to the palm of one hand and then the other finger to the palm of the other hand what do you think this reminds us of? It reminds us of those nails that were put into the hands of Jesus when he was stretched out to the cross. So we can't say the word Jesus in sign language unless we remember those nails who came into the hands of Jesus. And we remember then, by signing Jesus, how much sacrifice and self-giving and love that he had for us. And we get all that just in this sign, Jesus. And a similar one is for Christ, for the Messiah. You can make a big C. It's just the hand with the C. And then you take it over to one shoulder and put it all the way across. It's like you're making a banner. And this banner is what Christ is wearing. So we have Jesus Christ. Now, we didn't see this sign exactly on Good Friday. But if you watched our Good Friday service just a few days back, you might have seen Lauren dancing around at the end of it. And she was pounding those nails when we were singing, were you there, when they nailed him to the tree. And it was haunting and beautiful and sad to hear that. But the dance also was kind of a signing. But then on Easter Sunday, we had Elizabeth, another one of our youth, dance around to the hallelujah chorus. And although we didn't sing it literally, the dance at the end of the service was singing that chorus. And she actually was using a few signs too. Just like the sign for Christ is the C. You can make an L, see how it's almost like an L shape for the letter L, and it's the same thing for Lord, and it goes across like a banner. And sure enough, in the dance, when she was right across here at our main altar, and she was coming around, she was, as we were singing King of Kings and hearing Lord of Lords, she was going just like this, Lord of Lords, for her signing. 
So we can take these signs with us to remember the beautiful ways of how Jesus is Christ and Jesus is Lord. And today, there's another one too. Jesus is also our, and this comes around like this, living hope. The same L we can just use for Lord. If we take two of those and come from our sides right up to the center of us, this is living. And then hope, and living hope is our theme for the day. Hope starts from our mind. It's what we conceive. It's what we think of. And then it goes out in front of us. So if I turn this way, it comes from our mind, and it just goes out in front. Can you do that with me? Just shh, shh. And that's our hope. So then if we put it together, we have Jesus, Christ, our, and that includes all of us around, living, that's, that's at our side coming up to the very center of us, living hope. So take those signs, teach them to your parents too. But before we go, let's have a prayer together. And in the middle of the prayer, and for this prayer, you don't have to close your eyes because you get to sign part of the prayer with me. This will be kind of our liturgy, our doing the work of the people together. So you can do some of these very same signs, okay? All right, let us pray and stay with me with this. Thank you, God, Thank you, God. For, sending for sending, and ready, Jesus Christ, Christ, our living hope. Amen. All right, take those signs and share that living hope with others all around. It is infectious and beautiful, and it can grow to share life. Thank you so much for coming up and have an awesome Sunday. And I'm actually going to start the whole sermon with a little bit of signing, too. So, so make sure to keep paying attention. And we love you in Christ and hope to see you again next Sunday. Blessed be God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I do love that sign for Jesus, remembering then just the deep sense of self-giving, of sacrifice, and pure love that Jesus gives to us through the cross and then through the resurrection. And it all comes in one simple little sign. Anybody here fans of Harry Potter? Anybody read any of the books or seen any of the movies? We've got a couple here. Yep, people here who've seen it too. Millions of people, of course, have. Well, if we go back to that very first book, very first movie, The Sorcerer's Stone, there was this mystery how even this little baby, Harry Potter, was the one person to survive the dreaded Lord Voldemort who had come through with evil, killing all these other wizards, all these other people, and also even Harry's own parents who had also tried to protect him there. But for some reason, Voldemort wasn't able to kill Harry. And if you remember back in the whole um, movie, too, you have Voldemort who's so angry about that, and anybody else like the, um, the Malfoys or anyone else who's on that, that dark wizard side, even the way they would say his name would be at this disdain. It would be like, Harry Potter, right? Something like that. Because they couldn't stand how Harry had been able to live and, and somehow defeat their dark lord. Well, we find out near the end of the movie, as Professor Dumbledore, the headmaster of Hogwarts, is talking back with Harry, and Harry wonders, what was it? How, how was I able to be saved? Why didn't I die? How, how, how did I survive this? And does anybody here remember? It was just one word that Professor Dumbledore said was the reason, the power that saved Harry. It was? Love. Yes, it was love, that one great power, love, that Lord Voldemort didn't have. And as a matter of fact, when you think of Lord Voldemort, yes, he was scary, and yes, he was deadly. But at the very same time, we kind of see through the process of the books and the movies that he's also actually, well, weak and vulnerable. We find in that first movie that because of the choices, the evil choices that Lord Voldemort has made and having him being taken away, the only way he can now even survive is by the life force of, of unicorns in the first, the first movie. And then in later books movies, we, we hear about Professor Quirrell and, and Voldemort has to use him as a host just to be able to survive. He even admits this to Harry at some point in time. Look, look now how, what I must do just to be able to survive, he says. 
What does that remind you of today? Something that seems so scary and deadly and yet perhaps is weak and fragile and can't even survive on its own without a host. Our coronavirus. Yes, it is scary. It's deadly. And yet we just hear over, over, overnight, I just heard, sunlight itself and dry weather may do a lot. And just cleaning can kill it right away. It must have some kind of host, something just to be able to stay alive and to thrive. So yes, it's deadly. Yes, it's dangerous. But at the same time, it's actually also weak and vulnerable and arguably maybe not even fully, totally alive in and of itself, since it must use a host to be able to survive and thrive. The exact opposite is true for our living hope. We hear again in 1 Peter, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus the Christ. And we hear that it is by his great mercy that we have been given this new birth into a living hope. Through Jesus Christ, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so what I'm focusing on today is this living hope in contrast to all the, the virus and all the pandemic and everything else. This living hope. And I believe that it is truly much greater than any pandemic or than any evil. Now, we look back in Acts, and in Acts, the first lesson we heard in Acts chapter 2, we heard in verses 23 and 24 about the death and then the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how for that this has been the salvation for our souls. And of course, then around verse 26, we hear about how my, my flesh then dwells in this hope. And for the word dwells in Greek, it's kind of the word to tent, as in to put up a tent, to pitch a tent. So imagine almost like um, Ruth saying, where you go, I go. That, that wherever we are, wherever we go, this hope we have tents, it dwells with God. We dwell in that hope. We live in it wherever we go. And then, of course, for the first Peter text, it goes even further. It connects the very two, that the hope itself is a living hope. And when we think about our resurrected Christ, who has given us this gift of the forgiveness of sins, of salvation, of conquering even death itself, and having this life and this hope be not just here and now, but everlasting, wow. And we wonder, well, maybe this is not just figurative. And of course, the, the sign for hope comes from the mind and then extends out as and in the Greek, too, the word for hope is this expectation. But when we connect the word living with it as well, now we're getting this embodiment of hope, this embodiment of Christ. And I think just as we talked about in Easter with the risen Christ and seeing signs of the risen Christ around us, I believe perhaps right here and right now, we are seeing signs of the very true in the deepest sense of the word, living, indwelling living hope of Christ Jesus here in our world among us. There's a 99-year-old guy, Tom Moore. He's a World War II veteran, which was super cool, and he was from Britain, and he, um, he just decided for his 100th birthday, which actually will be tomorrow, April 20th, that what he was going to do was take his walker and then go out to his back garden and walk around and do 100 laps for his 100th birthday. Now, of course, he decided I better do about 10 laps at a time, so 10 days for 10 laps. And he has this charity he wanted to support, and he got on social media, yes, Tom at age 99, which is great, and there he is just, just sharing this with the world. And he has this charity that helps um, UK hospitals and doctors to care for coronavirus patients. So his thought was, Maybe I could raise up to a thousand pounds doing this, which would be about an equivalent of twelve hundred U.S. dollars. Now I've hoped over my lifetime to to maybe raise um, something close to a million dollars for offerings and tithes over the course of all these years together. And for Dina and I, we're at least in six figures now, but we're nowhere near close to a million. Well, Tom 
taken his stroll around, and he just finished on Thursday, and hoping to raise a thousand pounds, has actually raised more than sixteen million dollars when I last checked, and I'm sure it's higher even now. The most amazing thing. This is a sign, I believe, of that truly living hope of the resurrected Christ here in the world. Of somebody who starts with something just as simple as taking the walker out and doing some laps and hoping that somebody might want to have it almost like a walkathon, just your own personal walkathon. Amazing. Rodney Smith Jr., a guy out of um, Alabama, driving in his car from, you know, somewhere near Huntsville, Alabama sees this elderly guy out mowing his lawn who seems to be just struggling at the mower. And it's just one of those things, you know, do I, what do I do? And he just decided to stop and to go and help him mow his grass. And as, as he was finishing, Rodney decided, well, if I can do this and help out him, maybe I can do 50 lawns. And so he went as a, just a, as a motivation for himself to mow 50 different lawns for free for either uh, senior adults or for single parents or for those who are disabled or for veterans and once he got to 50 he said well I've done 50 maybe I could do 100 it's almost like a Forrest Gump thing with running and so he did 100 lawns but by the time he got to 100 he had this whole sense of vision of starting this whole organization which he has now done called Raising Men and he has all these youth who are now going out with this 50 yard challenge mowing lawns for free helping out those in need, especially now under this, um, under this lockdown and the shelter in place during our pandemic. So right here and right now, there are over 750 kids mowing lawns across the U.S. And there are even some in Germany, I think, in Japan and Canada and other places mowing these lawns. So it all started with just these, these little things, though. That's the amazing part about this living hope because it also is highly contagious, but it is life-giving and life-multiplying like loaves and fishes. And it can start with something so little. This is the incredible gift of God's grace that, that God has given to us. And we're simply just called to respond with little steps, having that living hope that has been given to us through the resurrected Jesus. Little things like stepping one step forward with a walker, Little things like just coming in to mow a lawn. Little things like perhaps putting a thread, a needle together. We also have someone in our church who has just started with a little thing, but it has grown and has been contagious and has been growing into something else. And others also have done the same thing too. It is Monica and there are other women in our church too. And I wanna to invite Monica to, to come forward. She is with us here today and to share what this little thing is and how it's grown and how this has been part of this living hope too right here with us in this community. So in early March, my daughter-in-law and her mom up in Minneapolis, they're both healthcare workers, and they contacted me and asked if I would consider making some cotton face masks. So uh, I had, like most of us women here, have some old fabric in a bin that's been there forever. So I pulled it out, I made a dozen of them, and I sent them north. And then I made up the rest of them and I called around here and at that point there really wasn't in, a, a lot of interest. So I talked to a friend of mine that I volunteer with in North Georgia and she said, oh, we're collecting those. So I met her pastor and I asked him, do you think, do you need more of these? And he said, please, you start and I'll tell you when to stop. So on my way back home, I stopped at Joanne Fabrics and loaded up a cart full of fabric then I went home and I emailed some of my neighbors and some women here at church, many of whom you know, Cheryl McGraw, Lois Collier, Mimi Jones, Joy Schill, and Karen Van Buskirk. And together, we were able to put together and sew 855 masks, which is, which is awesome. And before very long, of course, places like Kennestone wanted them. And you say and wonder, well, where was God in all of that? And for me, there were so many times when I felt like I had my back against the wall and I didn't know if we were going to be able to pull this off. I had spent more money than I really should have. And through the generosity of so many people, we were able to cover that and continue farther. There was a point where literally I thought we were going to run out of thread because the shelves were bare. So I took my dog for a walk through the neighborhood, stopped and talked to a couple of neighbors, and on my way home, I had a gallon Ziploc bag full of thread. 
Then Chemist Stone Hospital really loved the Georgia Bulldog masks. And I had gotten some fabric, but I just couldn't see sending my husband to stand in line again for hours waiting to try to get some of that fabric. And lo and behold, the next morning, a woman stood at my front door. She was a friend of a neighbor, and she brought 19 yards of Georgia Bulldog fabric so we could continue and make a lot more Georgia Bulldog and other Go dogs. <laughs> so what this tells me is I need to worry a little less. I need to pray and trust a lot more because each of us can make a little difference every day. Thank you so much, Monica. It's a great, great story. Thanks for being here with us. So this little things, like with Tom, Rodney, Monica, you, and me, just being open to God's living hope working in us and through us, it is already here as a gift, and God opens so many doors when we just would step up just a little bit beyond ourselves. And isn't that what true living is all about? It is not the Voldemort kind of stuff where you try to control others, defeat others, or maybe even live off of them, but to live beyond yourself for the sake of someone else in a Christ-like way. This is whole, full living. And when we take even those little steps forward, it is amazing with this living hope how God just spreads and multiplies it like loaves and fishes. So yes, there is a virus. Yes, it is scary. Yes, it is deadly. But in a sense, it is also weak and vulnerable, and perhaps maybe even scientifically not truly deeply alive in and of itself for all its dependencies. For we have a living hope that is true and deep and completely alive and forever. And these stories and the things that we keep seeing around us and the things we keep experiencing inside of us too, they let us know that God is fully deeply, truly alive. And this living hope is so much more powerful than any pandemic. As a matter of fact, I believe this living hope is the most powerful of anything in the universe because its source and the force that gives it the power is simply and deeply this. Pure love. Amen.
continue in faith together, sharing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayers of the people. I invite you also to join me in prayer. O God, inspire everyone to care for the world you have made, that all life and our very planet might thrive. Even as we begin to come back to a sense of normalcy, step by step, we hope, when the time is right, inspire us to continue to care for creation and minimize our human impact on precious ecosystems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O oh God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way during this ongoing pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear, O oh Lord, the prayers of your people, which we offer before you now, both spoken aloud and from the silence of our hearts. For the Cato and Robertson family, for the Ramirez family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O oh God. As we remember those who have died in faith, free us from the fear of death that we embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear these and all the prayers that we offer before you. Thank you for being our living hope incarnate through the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord, your son, who reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 